Good morning from an outrageously beautiful Pacific Northwest. It is Thursday, June 11th, 2015. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 182. 182 of the Tech Talk Today program. And we have a lot of interesting bits we're going to be picking up on in today's episode. So why don't I get right into it? Let's bring in our mumble room. Time appropriate greetings. L mumble room. Hello. 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 Hello, guys. I'm glad the chipmunk Hello. sound is gone, and I am happy to have you here because we have some interesting stories to dig into today. Uh, I wanted to start with this uh, story that keeps getting a lot of uh, bumps in the news, and we, st- we covered it in Unfilter last night, and it is the uh, hack of the government uh, personnel records database. About f- uh, four million records of government employees were uh, supposedly seized, they're saying, by Chinese hackers. Uh, but it seems to be that what was really at the cause is a lack of internal expertise and a decade of neglect to some of the systems that caused these systems to get breached. Uh, anonymous administration officials have blamed the China have blamed the China for the attack, <laughs> but uh, actually the White House has not officially yet blamed China. Uh, no direct evidence has even been offered. The FBI has blamed previous pr- uh, breaches on the Chinese as well for the OPM contractor that was believed to be breached. OPM is the Human Resources Department for the Civilian Agencies. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not a contractor, for the federal government. So this attack exposed records over 4 million current and former government employees. So in some, in some cases, they're saying it's being dubbed the biggest government hack ever. That's what CNN called it. And they're saying it affects every, every government agency has been affected by this breach because, well, the records for every government agency are held by this department. Uh, The OPM hack is just the latest in a series of these kinds of attacks that's been going on. Some pointed at Russia, some pointed at China. Uh, Here's the funny thing about it, is uh, the Department of Homeland Security spent quite a bit of money, $218 million, and uh, on on an upgrade to a $4.5 billion system they already spent on, and it's called the Einstein system. And Einstein is software being rolled out that's supposed to watch the network and watch the federal agency's systems for these kinds of breaches. But of course, it didn't actually seem to work. And uh, it was discovered later on by employees in the department, and then they used Einstein to go back and detect it. Uh, So, four million records, they say, potentially a lot more could be breached. They're pointing the finger at China. They're saying it's the biggest breach and hack of all time. It's being quoted as the new form of cyber warfare. Dun, dun, dun. It's pretty serious stuff, actually. I mean, I'm making light of it, but it seems to be that this could be a big deal. Mumbarum, what do you guys, any, got, you get any sense on this story? Uh, I don't know. I, do you buy it? Do you, uh, let's go with Rotten Corpse. Rotten Corpse, do you buy China is behind it, or does that just sound like the guys they always blame? Well, I mean, it's possible, but it's, it seems kind of odd that that's, you know, the, their go-to, you know, scapegoat. <laughs> the go-to target, in other words. Yeah, yeah, it does kind of seem like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, here, I'll play, I want to play a little bit of, uh, this is uh, uh, a little bit of a, a clip from uh, last night's Unfilter show that goes into more detail about this breach. This is CNN Breaking News. And there's more breaking news. We're now seeing uh, indications of what's being described as a massive data breach potentially affecting 4 million federal workers here in the United States. The data breach involves the government's Office of Personnel Management and the Department of the Interior. Washington Post, The Wall Street Journal, others are reporting the story. We're also now getting official confirmation from the Office of Personnel Management. Now, I want to play another part. Uh, This is just a quick abbreviation from last night's Unfilter. Uh, Check this out. This is on the Anderson Cooper program. And uh, one of CNN's reporters comes on to tell Anderson Cooper about uh, this Einstein software. I think it's about this point in the clip. The Homeland Security Department came in and used this system called Einstein uh, to try to uh, diagnose and see where else it was. And they discovered that it was spread much more broadly. Here's the issue. Okay. Uh, the Homeland Security Department is supposed to be doing diagnostic checks of government networks all over the place, and they clearly, clearly aren't doing it. And uh, there's another problem with the Einstein system, and that is uh, that it doesn't really detect when hackers change the signatures of the malware they're using. So that makes it really not that smart, uh, if, uh, certainly not any more smarter than, than anything you can find at Best Buy if it... <laughs> And what's great about this from a politics standpoint is the Department of Homeland Security, a fairly new department in comparison to some of the other people that wanted the job, fought very, very, very hard to have this responsibility to protect the federal government's homeland cyber infrastructure. They fought hard. The CIA wanted that job. The NSA wanted that job. The FBI. A lot of probably other departments and divisions I don't even know about wanted that job. And the the Department of Homeland Security got it. Uh, And then now they're blowing it. So that might be one of the reasons why this story is getting so much traction. 
I thought Lindsey Graham summed it up the worst and most insulting way. He said it was a cyber Pearl Harbor. Oh, I'm no. Like, no. Oh, no. I'm no, like, no, 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 no. No, that's like not even in the same realm. But I, the problem with these attacks is they don't show security experts to approve. So it's like, it's kind of like a he said, she said, like, we say China attacked us. China says it doesn't. But no one proves right. it or let someone else or a third party verify it. Yeah. It's, and it meanwhile, us- but in meanwhile, the rhetoric does have real damaging relations. You know, it, it damages the relations between the nations. And, and it, it, there is actual damage to that rhetoric. Uh, I want to talk about something that surprised me. One of the most well-known security research labs in the industry is Kaspersky Labs. They've been around forever. We've all heard about them. Well, today it comes out that they have suffered a breach. Uh, Kaspersky Labs CEO and founder Eugene Kaspersky wrote on his blog, We discovered an advanced attack on our own internal networks. It was complex, stealthy, and it exploited several zero-day vulnerabilities, and we're quite, com- we're quite, we're quite confident there is a nation behind it. Now, Kaspersky Labs is based out of Russia, I believe. Uh, the film uh, dubbed this uh, Dooku 2.0. Wow. Wow. Kaspersky Labs being attacked by an advanced persistent threat with stealthy, exploiting several zero-day vulnerabilities. Now, uh, one of the things, if you're not a TechSnap viewer, is one of the things that often points to a nation state is a lot of zero-day vulnerabilities. That usually means it's somebody who's buying up zero days and, and sort of sitting on them and then using them for these kinds of attacks, which usually means somebody that has a lot of funds, somebody that has the means to do that, which is usually a state. Uh, the attack behind Dooku 2.0 were hoping to infiltrate Kaspersky's networks to learn more about its services, the blog post revealed. It added that the group behind Dooku 2.0 also spied on several prominent targets. Kaspersky explained the situation as a mix of both good and bad news. The bad, obviously, is that their security firm was hacked. The good news, however, is that it claims none of their services were compromised. The post went on to say that's not wise to use an advanced, never-before-used technology to spy on a firm. For one, Kaspersky sells access to a great deal of its technologies, so this group could have just paid for it. Also, in an attempt to infiltrate Kaspersky, it clued the company into the next generation of spying technologies. Oh! They're like, we're on to you now, sucker! Now we got you. Now we got you. Who do you think it is? Hmm? Maybe it's China. Yeah, blame China. <laughs> yeah, like the chat room before I even asked it. Look like, at that before I even asked the question. China, 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 China. Good, good call, chat room. Good call. Okay, this next one, it's not news. I don't care. Does it all always have to be news? No, uh, uh, I, I don't think so. This next story is just good old classic Star Trek. Oh, but geekandsundry.com, they have a people's history of Star Trek video games. That's right. And man, is this epic. Uh, so, like, the very first Star Trek text game, look at that sucker. Star Trek, the Strategic Operations Simulator. i got to play a little bit of this one for you. This is like that old tank game from way back in the day where Welcome you... Welcome aboard, Captain. Oh, yeah. All right. Where you drove around in the tank and you shot at other polygon triangles. That's what this game's all about. So that's a good one. I never even saw this Star Trek game. And then, of course, uh, they highlight... The classic Star Trek, the 25th anniversary, which is one of the best video games ever created and uh, <laughs> the best Star Trek game ever created. And so they talk about Star Trek, the 25th anniversary, which you've got to go watch. And they go into the Star Trek, the next generation game. They go into some Deep Space Nine games that I never even had a chance to play. They give a little cha- a little time to Star Trek Elite Force, which is outrageously a fun game. Such a good game. What were those things? Excuse me, Doctor. Ah, Mr. Monroe. Your injuries seem to be rather superficial. Dermal regeneration will not be necessary. Though you have some mild skin irritation, perhaps you would like an analgesic cream? Uh, whatever. So it's, uh, it is, uh, you know, they, it's got the voice, they got the actors in there. Such a great post. If you're a big fan of uh, Star Trek games or don't know much about them, and, and the ones that are really good, I, you got to check out the link in the show notes. Uh, I like uh, I like Inagogo's uh, assertion. He says in the chat room that maybe it was another competitor that targeted Kaspersky Labs. That would make a lot of sense. Get in there and get some of that goodness. Uh, WW, was it uh, was it you that submitted the terms of service? Didn't read who who submitted this to the show? Yeah, it was me. Tell me tell me about this. I think this is a great link. I want to toss out there for the uh, viewers or our listeners. Basically, it's an extension and a site that basically breaks down the terms of service, those long ones that people don't like to read, into like short chunks and tells you 
what it means for your rights on that service what you like does it indemnify the site so you can't sue them for something does it protect your consumer rights things like that and basically you can download an extension and use it and then also contribute to um, things that have been added on their site that's great yeah there you go so terms of service didn't read we'll have a link in the show notes you can find it at tos you know like terms of service uh, didn't read tosdr.org tosdr.org and uh, it's available for your local browser. This is really cool because I know a lot of us are too lazy to read the whole thing. And so if they'll call out the important elements, and I love, I love that it's a little uh, commu- the community aspect to it too, so it can be it can be updated. Uh, I'm I'm about I'm about to freak out. We're at 524 patrons over Patreon.com/slash today. The closer we get, uh, here's here's how here's how freaked out I am. So here's the thing. When we get to 5.30, I'm both like, freaked out and excited. Uh, when we get to 5.30, I'm going to book a flight, and we're going to go over to Grand Forks, North Dakota, I am, and I'm going to do a Last Cribs at Noah's house, and we're going to tour there. We'll get some clips for the patrons. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, he's traveling for a couple of weeks, so when he gets back, we're going to do We're so close. When we get to 530, that's going to happen. And here's, here's how much I'm freaking out. Uh, Google Now is like telling me about flight price changes and stuff. Because I'm like, well, let's see. If we get to 5.30 in a couple of days, then I could book it around this time. Because I got to, you know, Noah's got family. So I got to work around that too. And he's got travel plans. And so I'm like, okay, but if I book it around this time. And then this morning I open up Google and I was like, hey, bro, your prices just went up by 95 bucks. I'm like, no, no, it's very stressful. But I'm also very excited. I, and he's got a boat. So like, come on, that's going to be worth it. And right now, I'm, tw- I'm basically, I'm trying to find flights where I'd fly out of Seattle and then, and then land in Portland, I think. And then from Portland, I could fly to Minneapolis. I'm not exactly sure how it would work. Is there any travel agents out in the audience? I mean, what the? I don't know. I'm using Google Flights right now. But I am pretty excited. And, and this isn't just about going out and getting a tour of Noah's house. It's really to celebrate it's just the beginning of summer, breaking it up a little bit, having some fun, and, and helping build a little more runway and recouping after we extended ourselves for not only we're we doing self this weekend, we're doing BSD Cam this weekend, and we just wrapped up Linux Fest Northwest. The Jupiter Broadcasting Network is firing. On all those cylinders, all of the cylinders, and uh, your support is making it possible. You are the fuel that we push into our cylinders and then combust and then push the rods of media production. I don't know. That's all I got today. Patreon.com slash today. <laughs> thanks, to your, thanks to your support to make it all of this possible. Uh, well, let's get out of here before I say something else even more ridiculous. And since uh, I just uh, was sort of weird there, I thought we could keep it real weird. With something super creepy. I'm a con in our chat room found this super, super creepy Nintendo commercial. What a better way to end today's episode. See you tomorrow for a Friday edition of Tech Talk Today, unless the universe prevents me from doing so. Which, the only way you would know that is either by showing up live at jblive.tv, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, or checking that calendar over jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. Don't forget you can make this show better when I'm not on the air, techtalktoday.reddit.com. Thanks for being here, and I'd love to have you show up and join our mumble room. Thanks, mumble room. Hugs and kisses. Get ready for this creepy video. It's going to give you the willies. We are Nintendo Ultimate TV Game System. We challenge all players.